Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. I've had a lot of people ask me how I would like to overwinter my colonies ideally. And you can do it a lot of different ways, especially if you were in Tennessee or places like Tennessee or further south. There's a lot of options. If you don't know who Michael Palmer is, he's one of the guys that I like to talk about because his information is solid. And you can, t as, you know, as someone who fools with a lot of bees, when I see his information, it makes sense. And honestly, if someone's information does not make sense, I'd be watching out for it because beekeeping is not unlike a whole lot of other th the rest of the stuff that we deal with in life. I mean, common sense and, and work. I mean, there's really nothing beautiful and attractive about the beekeeping that we do. It's, it's work. You know, it's hot days, feeding patties in wintertime, getting stung occasionally. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of good things, but at the same time, we're not promoting anything that's just like, stick this beautiful, genetically superior bee in this hive and just watch the honey roll in. Maybe we should do that. Maybe I can make more money. Laurel, write that down. Anyways, this is how we're going to overwinter this colony, and we do a lot of different things again. You can winter bees in five frame nukes successfully. You can do them in singles. You can do them in doubles. Heck, I do them in triple deep sometimes when I get lazy and just don't get the third deep off. As long as you have healthy bees with plenty of food around them and uh, you know they're not getting a bunch of you know here in Tennessee our biggest problem is we get all kinds of mud during the winter we don't get a whole lot of snow but we get rain 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 humidity 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 so we have to watch out for that and our bees are flying a lot in the winter which has its advantages and disadvantages so we all have to just realize what we've got to work with and plan accordingly now I have never really done this but um, I think this year we're going to tinker around with getting some insulation and we're going to stick them underneath these lids. Um, there's a couple different ways that we're going to do that this year and just kind of see how they work. I know it works for me, but we're just going to tinker around because I want to learn. Maybe I could do what I do better. But honestly, uh, what I've got working right now is cheap and it works. So get, let's get in this hive right here. By the way, this hive's got the Beetle Buster on it. So it's been on here since uh, July and we are in the third week of September. And just look at all these dead beetles down in here. You can see where the bees have dropped a little bit of pollen too. But I mean, it's really hard to tell which ones are the beetles, but basically all these round guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can just see all these beetles all over the place. You know, there's just dead beetles everywhere. And you know, sometimes you'll get a ball of pollen or something that looks like a beetle, but ultimately, um, you know, there's a lot of beetles down in here. They're everywhere. So that diatomaceous earth cuts them up really good. And uh, let's get into this hive and see how they're packing away this fall flow. It has not been a great fall flow. It's, it's been a little below average. And uh, there goes one. It, uh, it's just been so dry. We've had such a little amount of rain since early August. And I was really hoping we'd have a drier year. Because last year we broke records for rainfall in the fall and winter. And it really was a really rough Worse than this year fall flow last year for us, so it's better than last year. Okay, that's not looking too bad. I can feel it. This isn't full over here. It's mostly full on this side, so that's great. You know, we don't have to, but I'm probably going to turn this towards the outside and put that towards the inside. And we just want to check and see how much brood they have. I know there's a lot of pollen coming in right now. The golden rod, you can smell it. It's definitely not as prolific as it usually is, but this is my worst yard. This is my home yard. I have more bees here than anywhere else, and they just never produce as much honey here as other places. All right, check this frame out. That's a lot of nectar right in there. We haven't fed any of these in um, well, uh, a little over a month now, so you see all this bee bread down here. And For those of you who don't know, bee bread, when the bees want to store it long term, which is very important, when they come out of winter to have that supply, extra supply of protein and fat in the form of bee bread, they stick it down in the cell and fill it about halfway, three quarters, and then they'll cap it off with some honey, which helps seal it off and preserve it even more. So that's, that's what they do. Now some places don't have as much pollen as we do, but as long as the bees are strong and the air is good, we, we usually have a pretty decent bit of pollen going into winter. All right, now check this out right here. Look at that frame. That's what we want to see. Lots of brood right here. And uh, there's a little bit of nectar going in between the cells, but it's not like it's really bad backfilling or anything. That's 
Now some years we'd have to watch out for that, but this year we're not we're probably not even gonna get any foundation drawn very little. Which that was the way it was last year too, but the year before we drew some nice frames of foundation. Alright, so we've got some nectar above here. That's really good. We've got eggs all down in here and brood. And I'm okay if they kind of backfill up here a little bit. A good queen will drop down. There's a lot of brood on this side. I want to kind of go down here in a second in that next box and see what they have. And again, when this fall flow is finished, which in my area, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to have another two weeks of it. It really depends on this weather. If we can get some rain, it might extend it a little bit. But, I mean, we have trees that should be keeping their leaves for several weeks from now. And they're just, they've like lost half their leaves. My raspberry plants and stuff like that, they're just, they look like they're on death's door. I'm out of water the things. Go on vacation. I'm telling you what, everything starts drying up. I watered them before I left. Just a lot of nectar. There's eggs down in there. Oh, there's a Varroa mite. Where did it go? Yep, right there. See on the back of that bean? I need to do an alcohol wash on this colony. And we're going to begin fall treatments on this yard pretty soon. We'll talk about that more later. We did treatments as soon as we pulled the honey supers off in June. By the way, we do um, three different, well, we do more than three individual treatments, but we have three times a year that we treat. We treat in the winter time with the oxalic acid. When the bees are broodless, we treat in uh, late, uh, early summer, I guess, right after we pull honey. And then we treat again in the fall. Those mites are a big problem and they, they really pull away from your uh, colony's productivity and we need them really strong and healthy if we want them to really be productive next year so we've got more brood on this frame and well, there's just all kinds of honey up in here so hopefully they'll put some more honey up here we need to go down and check and see what they're doing down below I imagine we're gonna see more pollen and bee bread okay let's get this over now as soon as our fall flow ends, you don't even have to wait till it completely ends. But as soon as it gets close to ending, you need to be on top of it because if your bees need feed, especially those little bitty colonies that don't have the worker force, so they don't capitalize on the fall flow, they are going to need attention a lot quicker because they just don't have the workforce. Oh yeah, there's some weight up in there, and uh, they're going to need feed. All right, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of honey down in here, which uh, it's not that surprising. Get out of here, cat. All right, the wind keeps blowing my smoke away. See this uh, frame right here? All that? That's where a, uh, a colony died probably several years ago, a couple years ago, who knows. And a mouse got into the hive and started chewing away at the frame. Yeah, don't let mice get in there. Woo, we'll talk about that, and I just about pinched a bee. That's most of the time when I get stung, that's how I get them, is because I'm not paying attention, and I grab one. All right. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of larvae down in there. They're capping it off. Oh, yeah, this frame from top to bottom. It's got, it's got all kinds of brood up in here. Check that out. So we got it all the way up in here. And we got it all the way down into here. And they're capping some of it off. This is exactly what we want to see. We need to get these treatments on. We'll do an alcohol wash. That might have been just a random mite that we just happened to spot. But I don't believe in those kind of things. Um, I have lost too many hives to mites to just be like, Oh, well, you know, that's just probably a lucky mite that I saw. Mite levels are still probably pretty low. Now, my philosophy is if you see them, then uh, they need to be double checked. All right, and this is the time of the year when you really got to get on those mites too because they're just going to be eating your bees all winter long in that cluster. All right, there's our queen right there. Got the red dot, so she is from 2018. Still doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of weight down in here. I'm seeing some bee bread over here. Let's see what I can see over here. A lot of larvae. That's good. I'm not seeing as much bee bread as I would like to see. Well, there we go. It's 
still not as much as I usually see this time of the year, but the plants just aren't doing as well as they need to. I, I just saw another mite on a bee, so that means it's time to hit those treatments. That's very common this time of the year. You've got to realize that, you know, on a colony that's brooding hard like this, it's got several frames of brood. It looks healthy, but they also are the best at reproducing mites as well. And, uh, you know, this time of the year, the mite levels are probably getting higher. They can double easily within a brood cycle or more. Double is being conservative. It depends on the size of the colony and how much brood and a couple other factors, but I like to plan on the worst just because uh, you just, you got to, you just got to. So I know a lot of you all have been messaging me on our Facebook group and stuff, talking about alcohol washes and, and some of you have found out that your mites were higher than you thought. So you've been getting on top of it and hammering them. And I know some of you have even mentioned that you were embarrassed about that, but but don't be. I mean, what's embarrassing is when you uh, lose a colony and uh, you have no idea what, why. And I've been there a lot and just like, what happened? And especially when you get down the, the road, whether it's a year or two later and you realize you've been losing all these colonies from something that you could have prevented if you'd have just known what was going on. And that's that's why we do the alcohol washes. I, I understand a lot of people don't like them. There's other methods out there, but ultimately, we're gonna do our best job to take care of our bees in the way that we know how, and that's all that we can do. And ultimately, we need our, our bees healthy. We can't just, you know, it's different for me. Maybe you guys can choose to do differently. I, I'm not trying to just, you've gotta do it my way. But, you know, for me, I can't have 50% of this yard right here not performing and making production next year because of my negligence. Now, some people that you know have 20 hives or 10 hives or whatever, and they are only wanting honey for themselves, they can afford to do those kind of things. Maybe I don't know, but you know the way I feel about it. If you can get 10 out of 10 to look really good, why not go ahead and do it? Don't shake your head at me. You know you like that. Anyways. We're gonna throw this colony back together, but it's looking good. We still got a couple more weeks of flow. If they haven't packed away enough honey, then we're gonna start feeding a little bit. Some of them I know already have packed enough. This one's about a average size colony. It's not an above average size. The above average ones, are, we're probably gonna pull a couple of frames of honey from for the splits, but this one right here, I imagine we'll probably end up feeding it a gallon of Pro Sweet just to make sure they have extra going through the winter, maybe a gallon and a half and it's the honey consistency. So anyways, we'll talk more about that, have more on the videos about going into winter. It's a, let's cut this video short. Thanks for watching.